Today we're going to apply raycasting and digital differential analyzer on StarCraft 2 maps to perform terrain analysis, find choke points, and do region decomposition in a 2D world. We'll go over all of this step by step, and at the end, we'll have divided StarCraft 2 maps into multiple regions separated by choke points. Raycasting might sound intimidating, but it is actually very simple. From a position, we cast a ray, think of it like a laser beam coming out of your eyes, in a direction of our choice, and we follow the ray until it hits a wall. In the case of StarCraft 2, walls are any tiles that cannot be walked on. Now, this is cool and all, but how do we actually know that we've hit a wall? A naive solution could be to check very often where the ray is, and see if there's a wall exactly at that location. The problem is, if we do not check often enough, we might step over the wall. But if we check too often, then our algorithm is going to be super slow. To do this efficiently, we're going to use what is called Digital Differential Analyzer, or in short, DDA. StarCraft 2 maps are essentially a 2D grid of tiles with constant dimensions, each tile being one unit wide by one unit tall. Yes, there is height in StarCraft 2, but there are no two tiles with the same X and Y, and all tiles exist, so we can ignore the heights for our analysis. What DDA does is that given these properties, being a 2D grid of cells being one by one, we can easily know which tile our ray is going to cross next, and we also can know exactly where this is going to happen. Given the direction of our ray, there is only ever three possible outcomes. It will either move in Y, in diagonal, or in X. Which one it is going to hit depends on the slope of the ray, which is constant and known from the start. All we do is determine how far the ray would travel if it moved by one in X, and how far it would go if it moved by one in Y. We take the smallest of both, and we've got the smallest step that travels to the next tile. If both are equal, meaning that we get the same result whether we move in X or Y, it means that we moved in diagonal. Rinse and repeat until we hit a wall. Now this is very efficient because we only need to do two checks for every tile that we hit compared to the thousands of checks that the naive solution would have to do. To find choke points with ray casting, we need to understand the properties of a choke point. We could define choke points as region in space, where the wideness diminishes as we move. Or, from another perspective, we could call them regions in space, where there are walls on two opposite sides and open areas on the two other sides. Now, if we cast rays in all directions from a certain position, we will get the distance of the closest wall in all these directions, which gives us a pretty good feel of the surroundings of the tile. With this information, it's pretty easy to implement an algorithm that will find and compare the distance between the walls around it. So for example, as I said earlier, if there's a wall on your left and a wall on your right, but there is a wide open space in front of you and a wide open space in your back, then you probably are in a narrow space. So from each tile, if we compare the length of the rays that are perpendicular, we can approximate the orientation and distance of the walls around us. If one ray is short and the other is large, then we probably are in a choke point. On the contrary, if both rays roughly have the same lengths, then we're probably in an open area. For all pairs of perpendicular rays for a given tile, we will give them a score based on their relative lengths and keep only the most relevant rays, let's call them choke lines. We will then average the scores of these choke lines and it will give us a score for the tile. The higher the score, the most likely it is that this tile is part of a choke point. Next, we'll keep all the tiles with a score above a certain threshold and we will do some clustering on them to find choke areas, meaning tiles that are next to each other and that probably form a choke point. 
Now sometimes there will be tiles with very high scores within a cluster next to other tiles which are still above the threshold. But in these cases, we will want to discard the lower ones to favor only the narrowest part of the choke area. Finally, for all the tiles that are left, we will select all the choke lines that we computed earlier, and from that, we will get our choke points. The final step is going to break down the map into regions. We could consider choke points that we just found as regions, but for my use case, I decided to keep only one line per choke point and split the map into regions separated by those choke lines. To do this, I start with the whole map, uncut, and I apply the first choke line. Next, I check if the map has been divided in two using a flood fill algorithm. If it was not, I apply the next line until it does. As soon as I have two separate regions, I proceed to try to split them with the remaining lines and I do this until I run out of choke lines. My algorithm also has the liberty of ignoring certain cuts if it judges that the newly created regions are too small, just in case. As you can see, the results are very good. What's even better is that I can run my algorithm on any map without having to tweak any hyperparameter. The whole analysis takes about 3 seconds on my machine. On maps that have about 11,000 walkable tiles using a single thread. On all the maps that I ran it on, I've only found 4 regions that could be improved over a total of roughly 300, so I'm pretty satisfied with the results. Here are some images that I produced with the regions data. The colors don't matter, I just picked different ones so that we can really see the regions contrasting with each other. My code is all open source. I will leave relevant links in the description down below if you are curious about the exact implementation. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two about raycasting and how it can be used. Leave a like if you made it this far, it will really help my channel grow, and also it lets me know that you enjoyed this. There are many many more algorithmic problems that I had to solve for my StarCraft bot, so if you guys like this, I'll do more. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Okay, thanks, bye!